This video is part two of our discussion regarding JavaScript repetition statements such as the for statement and the while statement. To review, this example shows an array. And an array is simply a variable that stores more than one value on a single object. Our object in this case is called my employees. And by using square brackets and a numeric key, we're able to populate more than one value in that single array. And we also defined that array initially as a new array. If nothing else, an array is very handy for demonstrating a repetitive statement like a for statement. And again, to refresh on how a for statement works, it has three parameters that can be defined, and each of the parameters is separated by a semicolon. The first parameter defines a variable. It defines that i is the value that we are going to be iterating against. So here we could say, for example, our starting index is 0. The second parameter indicates when our loop should end. So if we are going to loop through an array, we could choose to only stop at position 3 if there were, say, 100 items. Or in this case, we're going to, st to stop at the end of the array. And then we're going to iterate. The last parameter is what's called an iterator statement. So what we are saying here is on the conclusion of every loop, increment the i value by one number. That's what the plus plus means. And then within curly braces, we have the activity that should occur every time that a number is incremented in the loop. So we actually are executing an if statement. We're asking for the value of i, and we're comparing it against 1. So we're saying here, if i is equal to 1, which is why we have two equal signs, then display an alert message. Display it's Mr. Smith. Else, if it's any other number, alert the equivalent array value with i passed in instead of a number. So it's a dynamic call to display that name. So I'm going to save my script and go to a browser and then I'm going to refresh the page and what I see are alert messages appearing. The first one is the name Arnold, the second says it's Mr. Smith, and the third says Lorenzo. If I go back to my script those are our three names, except for that we handled Mr. Smith's display in a special way. For a while statement, it's first necessary to declare a variable that will serve as the information being evaluated by the while statement. So I'm going to call this variable i, and then I'm going to set it equal to 4. We'll just start somewhere arbitrarily. And then we'll create a while statement, which is lowercase. We'll type while and we'll type i and we'll say less than 10 and then we'll loop through the while statement and here is a very big gotcha you could say in terms of what to expect with this statement the i value will only change if something happens to change it the while statement is different than the for it won't auto increment the i value Instead, it's necessary to type i++, which is, in fact, the value that we entered and as the third parameter of the for statement a few minutes ago. This will ensure that the loop increments as each check is made against its value. So I'm going to alert i. I'm going to save the file and we'll refresh the browser. And we'll see that we go. We have a number four, and then we continue through these different message boxes until we hit the end of the while. So that demonstrates the basic principle of a while statement. Thank you very much.